We look forward to helping you maximize your multiple and get the best value for your business by applying our 4P method. This presentation is bonus content on what are the hidden value levers for maximizing your multiple. I'm sure you're all aware that 80% of the results come from 20% of the effort. So we want to focus on the most important value levers so we can increase your valuation over 100%, sometimes more. So what are the top three value levers you need to focus on? First one, revenue reliability. If buyers think they can get the same revenue that you've been generating, they'll be more confident and more willing to pay more. So that revenue reliability is important. So if you have high customer concentration, one or few of your customers drive the bulk of your sales, your revenue stream will be considered risky. Riskiness lowers the value. So how can you decrease that customer concentration by maybe increasing the pool of buyers? Um, products or services that result in large infrequent sales is also risky. It's that kind of lumpy revenue stream. Uh, high fluctuations in revenue streams are considered riskier. So what can you do to kind of smooth that out? And when you sell large projects, that seems like a daunting task, but we, we've worked with sellers and uh, managed to overcome that. So what to do? Um, restructure for a significantly higher value. Uh, increase and diversify your customers. So a larger pool of customers means that you're less reliant on one particular customer. Creating recurring revenues is important. Uh, and people always say, oh, it's difficult. How do I make recurring revenue out of my business? But you know what? Amazon made it out of shipping. <laughs> they did recurring revenue. So there are creative ways to figure that out. Um, for example, if you have a um, you know lumpy revenue, maybe you do a large product, maybe you can create it with a service component, and that would give you more recurring, reliable revenues. Um, and you can also make revenues more secure with contracts. A lot of times people have big government uh, customers, and if they tie them down with contracts, then a buyer will feel more secure. Now, sometimes those contracts are still cancelable within 30 days, but it still gives an element of reliability to a buyer. Okay, value lever number two, dependency on the owner. We've talked about this before. But um, the more a business is dependent on you, the more difficult it is to sell. Um, and sometimes sales is a big problem. You might be your customer's favorite salesperson, but if you can diversify that, it will increase your value quite a bit. So I know it's great to be wanted by your customers, but sometimes it's not the most important thing for increasing your value. Um, operations. If the business can't run without you, this also hurts your valuation. So many owners have how they do things all in their head, and you need to get it out of your head and onto paper so someone else can do it when you're not there. Um, so what to do? Remove yourself as a bottleneck for a higher valuation. SOPs, standard operating procedures. Uh, this way your team can operate when you're not there and they know what to do and how to do it and when to do it. <laughs> Um, and delegation. Often uh, uh, owners do it themselves because they feel like they can do it better, but you have to learn to delegate and train your staff and get them so that they can provide the same quality of service and it will be more efficient in the long run. We always tell owners, take a long vacation. You'll find out if your business can run without you. Okay, value lever number three, a good financial story. Everyone kind of knows this, but there are some details to it. Clean books. This is the obvious one, right? Reliable books create trust. The deal will go much smoother with trust and you'll get a higher value. It's the same as if you're buying a home. If you go to a home and you see a big problem that's not disclosed, you wonder what else is hidden and what the uh, seller's not disclosing. So if they can trust you and you're an open book and your books are clean and reliable, it'll go much smoother, faster, and you'll still get that higher value. Consistent, profitable growth. 
Uh, buyers look for at least three years of consistent performance. This is both growth in revenues and profits, if possible. Um, one banner year does not mean your value will be higher. <laughs> we often see this where, oh, I had this great year, I want this high value. But unless you can show a consistent trend that that's going to happen again or have really valid reasons why it's going to happen again, a buyer will be skeptical and will lower your value. So, for example, if you had a new patent on a product and you just launched it and that year was was much higher, then that might be arguable that that would continue. So, um, but a consistent growth pattern is much easier to justify a higher value. Not financeable. If banks can't finance the deal, you will have significantly fewer buyers, which will again lower the price. More bidders, we can create bidding wars, we can get that value up. So you have to make sure your, your business is financeable. It must be able to afford debt payments at whatever price, and then buyers can, can take over. Now, some larger businesses will be bought by strategic players, but the strategic players are still looking for ways to finance the deal and for it to make sense financially. So what to do? Ensure your financial story is a bestseller, and we can help you do that. What this looks like in action. So I want to give you an example of someone who didn't have clean books and what happened. Um, it was a calculator refurbishing business. His books were not clean. He was uh, doing some method where he was like funneling the revenue through another business and back so that he could avoid the taxes on it. It was profitable, but his accounting methods made it impossible for buyers to get bank funding. So we had to find that cash buyer, and at a $3 million purchase price, that's difficult. Uh, wealthy buyers uh, don't keep that amount of cash around. They use their money. They leverage it uh, so they're getting a return on it, so it's not sitting in the bank waiting to buy a business most of the time. So a cash buyer just makes it more difficult to sell, especially at a large purchase price. Um, we did find a buyer, but he needed the seller to do a seller carry note of a million, Seller wasn't willing to do it, so the deal didn't go through, and the seller, I think, still has the business. Uh, so uh, two key takeaways. One, the right consultative broker can help you optimize key value levers for boosting your valuation. And two, you may not be ready to sell today because you need a higher value, but with the right help and guidance, you can get a higher price when you are ready. Thanks for listening, and look forward to talking in our one-on-one -on -one session with you.